<laughs> the webinar is being recorded and the recorded version of the webinar will be available about a week following the webinar. Uh, there was a fee for this webinar, so that's certainly available for anybody who wants to purchase that uh, afterwards as well. So my name is Josephine and I'm in Burlington, Ontario, and David is with us from Vancouver, BC, uh, and Isaac in London. Following the webinar, Isaac, we will be, and others, um, we will be asking you to fill out a couple of quick feedback polls just to give you, just to give us your feedback on our experience tonight and how we can continue to offer uh, great webinars. The webinar this evening, or evening here in Ontario, um, early evening for David, will be one hour, and um, David has prepared a PowerPoint presentation for us, which we will be following, and uh, the PowerPoint is available for download, and if you look at the right-hand column of your screen, Isaac, you'll see the files pod. Uh, if you click the, the title in that pod that says Hatfield PowerPoint, you'll be able to download that file directly to your computer and have that for viewing afterwards. Unfortunately, the only David and I will be visible on camera, um, mostly David for the webinar and I at the beginning and the end. And, um, and we will have access to my microphone but if you do have any questions or comments you can feel free to type them into the chat pod and I know David will take them uh, as he's able and we hope to make this a very engaging experience for you so David comes with a welcome <laughs> Thank you very much, Josephine. Welcome, folks. Um, really uh, honored to, to be have been, have I've been invited into um, sharing my thoughts and experiences on this topic, which is uh, increasingly becoming profoundly important to me for a number of reasons that I, I hope to really clearly get across to, to listeners tonight. So by way of introduction, um, in addition to what Josephine's just said, I got really interested in rites of passage work around the year 2000. Um, and have been sort of pursuing it uh, professionally, personally, and educationally since then. Um, I recently completed a, an MED in something called social ecology, where I spent a lot of my uh, research time looking at rites of passage uh, processes and programs that I've been a part of. I may refer a couple times tonight to a program called Your Voice, Your Gifts, Your Power, and that is, uh, as of 2012, uh, the rite of passage program that I'm now running here in BC. And pertinent to our conversations tonight, I would say it's, it's good to include that I was born on the prairies in Calgary, and I'm now a coastal being. And within that, my e-identity or ecological identity is um, one of a cocoon maker or builder. So building...
containers for transformative uh, work and experiences to be had. Uh, what we're going to do in the webinar today is um, move through some content around what, starting with a really basic question, what is rite of passage experience? And uh, what are the hallmarks of the, and the elements that compose that kind of experience? We'll look at both traditional and contemporary examples. And uh, we'll look at how we, as listeners in our respective of work environments in our communities, in our families, in our friendship circles, or our being aunts or uncles, uh, how can we help create some kind of rite of passage processes for our young people? So that's kind of a, a few markers on where we're going. And this doesn't mean that you have to quit your day job and become an urban shaman. Um, but we're going to really look at how we can be in service to our young people in their innate need for this kind of uh, experience. So. Starting off with a, a kind of sweeping comment, um, my view around on Canada and it's, um, I guess I'd want to say it like this. In my experience in Canada, in these last, you know, Thirteen years. It, it appears to me. that virtually no young people are, are receiving receiving a grounded intention community based um, wisely led right of past process and some notable exceptions Um, in 
and some first. Nations group some Jewish groups. Well, many Jewish groups, and there may be other yeah. doing faith. Based right to passage work that I'm unaware of. So even uh, acknowledging all those those groups out there, again on the whole, um, my experience has been virtually no young people are receiving that kind of gift from their community. So it's it's an open territory. Um, I'm going to invite people to make comments and questions during the time. So if you want to type in uh, questions and, and things, I will be um, pausing two or three times for sure during the, during the webinar to um, invite and ask, ask, sorry, answer questions that folks might be asking. And um, my oh, a perspective I'd like to give to you is that um, I believe that whoever you are out there listening, and whatever experience level you may have with this, in my books you're very experienced and you know a lot already. Um, so this is, I think, a topic that will will um, reveal itself in that way quite quickly. So why is this important? Um, it's a topic of relevance and fascination, and it, for me, it's it's a uh, it's an important strand of community life that's that's largely missing, as I said before. And as we move in this emergent time, uh, in response to what feels like to me. Uh, an overlapping, intensifying series of d trouble, and in some cases, on some days, I feel like emergency. Um, this is a, a piece of social fabric and the social technology that we need in the movement towards uh, social, sus uh, social sustainability and environmental sustainability. So Isaac's asked a really good question here. So when we talk about rites of passage, do we mean uh, specifically moving into adult into adulthood from youth. And I'd say today, that's what we're talking about. Mostly I'm going to focus on that uh, that age range. But I'd say everything I'm saying about rites of passage and everything I've learned, everything I'm trying to share here, uh, really comes from, uh, in my learning, um, a sequence of uh, events, a sequence of hallmarks and processes that can be found and are required around any life stage transition, any and all life stage transitions. Um, and I don't think it's too far-fetched a thing to say that it seems like other than birth and death, uh, the big one that really grounds us into our adult life and possibly has the most importance is the youth to adult or youth to young adult life transition. So thank you for that question. And yes, that's exactly what we're going to focus on today. So what I'm going to do is invite um, invite folks to, uh, I don't know what, what your ages are and not necessarily asking, but to, to just think about, if you want even to just ground yourself and close your eyes a little bit, soften your gaze, um, to reflect on your own 16-year-old um, self and to try and remember what, what you were like back then, what kind of clothes you were wearing, who was important to you in your life at that time, what kinds of questions were you asking and working with back then, what was important to you back then, what did you care the most about, and what kind of edges were you pushing, so in other words, what kind of risks were you taking? We're drawn to 
what kind of confusing ideas or emotions were swirling in you? And what sort of visions might you have had for yourself back then, for your life, for your future? So anything you're gleaning right now would be useful information to just hold on to and uh, to work with during the webinar and most certainly after the webinar as well. So let's start with some definitions in our coming back moment here. And I'll, I'll, really, I'll put it up front. I'm, I'm a workshop leader and facilitator. And so I'm really used to working with large numbers of people in front of me. And um, this is a new experience. It's quite interesting. Uh, so let's start with a rite of passage definition. I've got a couple here on the screen. So I'll just, I'll just read them through with you. A category of rituals that mark the passage of a person through the life cycle from one stage to another over time, from one role or social position to another, integrating the human and cultural experiences with biological destiny birth, reproduction, and death. These ceremonies make the basic distinction observed in all groups between young and old, male and female, living and dead. And that's a passage from the Encyclopedia of Religion. Uh, there's, here's one from Jack Cornfield. A rite of passage is described as a forced journey through a canyon so hard and narrow that you can't take any baggage with you. It usually involves a brush with death in order to know to find what one truly knows. So building on these definitions, I'd like to add a, an important voice for me in my work and my thinking about this is Bill Plotkin. And I'll refer to this book, Nature and the Human Soul, and be happy to refer people to that book as um, a very, very comprehensive um, model of uh, human development and what he calls eco-centric human development which he contrasts throughout the book with egocentric uh, human development. So um, adding on to these definitions we've already got going on, for Plotkin, a rites of passage is soul work. It's the journey of the soul, and for many people who've written about rites of passage, it's, it's the movement of the soul from one life stage to another, the soul's desire for change. And for Plotkin, soul equals ecological identity. And... Um, he's talk, he talks a lot about an authentic adult, and his definition, sort of paraphrasing, an authentic adult equals uh, a person who's understanding their unique purpose, which cannot be defined only by a social role or vocation. So when we ask young people, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Often, and certainly was in my case, the, the thought process was supposed to be about what job am I going to hold? And I really like Plotkin's work because he, he goes further than that and he actually um, prioritizes uh, a social identity below that of an ecological identity. So again, paraphrasing his work, um, we were born to take on our own ecological identity, which we are then to take on in the earth community. So in other words, in our, in our day to day lives, when you make a commitment or a vow or promise to accept our nature and cultural identity and we give it to the community we become an authentic adult this is a soul initiation a human's ultimate place or role in the world and their ecological niche so i really like his concept of this ecological uh, identity and i've worked i've started working with it in the last couple of years and it's quite a confounding thing to do uh, and i think there's great power in it and great wisdom in it because of that so I invite you to consider um, adding, adding on to the, the thoughts you had maybe earlier about your own adolescence, that um, an important process in understanding rites of passage for us as adults now is, um, is to consider the role we play, the ecological role we play in our ecosystem and the social role we play in our human system and how those two things are related. And then, one last concept in, by way of sort of getting started um, is the idea that the most important part of what happens, the most important part of rites of passage is what happens between the passages and life stages. 
So rites of passage, again, this is coming from Plotkin's thinking. Rites of passage is education and celebration of life passage that is already happening. I've definitely met uh, a lot of rites of passage practitioners who I'd say were on that uh, thought level, and then some who are who are not so much on that thought level. And there's a danger, I think, in getting too focused on uh, what happens during a rite of passage program or experience when we're trying on purpose uh, with with our programming and our skills to bring a young person along and step towards and into their young adulthood that it all has to happen on the weekend or the week or the month long course or whatever it might be. And so I think we need to relax on that and recognize that a lot of what's happening happens before the course or the process, some of it during and a lot of it afterwards. So a few pieces of introductory stuff there. Um, so these are three questions and I honestly don't remember where I found these, where I stumbled upon them and they, they exist all over the place in different forms. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling that they're quite universal. And these three questions, simple as they may be, um, seem to have tremendous power for people at all times, and especially during the life stage transition. Um, one of the ways you, that I've come to think about life stage transitions in is, and I've, I've just spent time in New Mexico, as was mentioned, um, working with one of the staff at the college that I was working at, who's approaching 30 years of age and feeling a strong transition coming up. And we actually worked with these questions by a river. Um, the three questions being, who am I, where am I going, and who's going with me? And I've used these questions with young people in many different forms, basically giving them time and repeated asking of the same question um, to help reflect on exactly this, who am I, where am I going, and who's going with me? And um, so I offer those as guiding hallmarks as well as very practical tools that can be used with young people. And they can be answered verbally, they can be answered to nature, they can be answered to a listener or listeners, they can be responded to with artwork or music or dance. Um, they're completely malleable, they can be reworded, etc. I sometimes invited young people to write about these questions, etc. So something about the process of actually sitting with those questions, huge as they are, um, I found tremendous value for myself as well as uh, young people and adults. And my conclusion is that these questions are alive in all of us universally through our lives, but they become far more pressing and troubling when we stop having a feeling of security about the information we're calling the answer. So um, offering those up as a, as a predominant and functional um, centerhood piece. Yeah, Josephine um, commenting here, I've read that young adulthood and the quote tasks, developmental task of early adulthood now extend, now extend from age 18 to 45. Yes, I think anybody who's interested in rites of passage or is noticing this quality of our, of our society is realizing that adult or young adulthood and adolescence is stretching on longer and longer. There's some, uh, Hollywood is definitely aware of this. They've produced some movies, which I couldn't probably stand watching, but one of them uh, called Failure to Launch, um, i.e. a young man still living with his parents, age 30 something, whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, I've, I've never been to um, uh, an intact uh, traditional community indigenous community, but in my readings and in some conversations with others who have, I've heard stories, uh, you know, in the last 10 years, so not hundreds or thousands of years ago, of uh, four and five-year-olds being asked, I think this is in, in uh, rural Ghana in West Africa, but I, I, can't, I can't remember that for sure, um, a young person being asked, a very young child being asked to go pick up a live hot coal from the fire to bring it over to the mother so she can use it for something. And the child knowing how to do that um, without tools, just grabbing, juggling, <laughs> juggling the hot coal, walking over uh, nonchalantly and doing it um, as an act of child abuse in Canada, <laughs> we would call it. This is ridiculous. You cannot have young people handling hot things and so on. So um, uh, it's a problem. It is a problem that we are not initiating our young people into a grounded, authentic adulthood 
um, in a way that allows them to let go and release and finish their childhood and move into more fully adult role where their, their predominant concern and enjoyment is being in service to the community, not taking from the community, not partying all over the community, but being in service, being a strand that's woven into the community and also receiving the gratitude and acknowledgement and validation from the community for offering what they offer. It's a simple enough concept, but again, it seems we're a long way away from enabling it on a large scale. So moving along. Another big piece for me is um, looking at stages that compose a rite of passage process. So um, there's various versions of this again. There's as few as three and as many as six or eight, depending on who, who you're talking to. Um, these are the five that I feel the most comfortable with. So acknowledging difference, um, I'll go with these five. Uh, a preparation, so a call to adventure in Joseph Campbell's terminology. Uh, in my observation, the preparation is when trouble starts happening, and trouble being um, the flow of life. Is feeling less smooth um, Or disrupt disrupted there's negative questions at the at The primitive of things What used to work without question now doesn't. work so well Question is about
who am I? Where am I? Going and he's going. With me, There's a great going for new information and experiences to, to answer those questions. When the call to adventure is fully Heated. There is some kind of separation. The separation doesn't necessarily need to involve geographic travel, but it often does. The separation is meant to be from what is known, familiar, ordinary, or what is called home. Um, the third part which is the, the time-wise is the big part. The threshold, so, so passing in, into a state where there's a perception. feeling of change happening.
this is we're great growth is going to happen And this is where Are going to be hit. Zones are going to be tested. Education is being offered through experience. By God's and and leaders and we'll talk. More about that. In a moment. Um, basically, challenges and ordeals. This is the rough stuff. This is where you're going through. through
uh, getting your old skin. And uh, feeling raw and vulnerable. Until the new skin has had a chance to form. A lot of feeling of not knowing Um, adults can be very difficult, uh, uh, and for young people as well, um, feeling incompetent. Unable. And that's precisely what should be happening. So that's something something new actually can grow from that
the return. Um, Again, if physical return or an emotional Psychological return. to the ordinary the data Uh, the place called home. The celebration that uh
person in this case is where for seeing on you people that a young person is returned First of all, that they survived on all levels, and, and that the, the community is rich for their experience. And and their return because a more resilient, more able person has returned in the place of a, a needier, less, less able person who left. And then the real work begins. And this is where contemporary writes passage stumble was badly uh, uh, and often is in the integration of the experience. Um, so daily life uh, incorporation of the new learning roles and responsibilities. So basically, putting the experience into action. And I'll speak more about that is But um, this is the place where traditional society excelled because they were completely literate in ritual work and uh, all the presumably all the elders and adults 
in the community had, had gone through a rite of passage of their own. They knew how to receive someone from that experience. And that was not the case uh, in the contemporary world. And so my experience is uh, the suffering, the fear, the in, innate and difficult challenge for young people coming home from very well done experiences, very well crafted processes and design uh, programs to a community of friends and family and schools who have no idea how to receive them and in some cases would rather uh, not hear about the experience and would, would like them to revert to the, the person who left and let go of this experience. So it's a challenge for contemporary work. Uh, I'm thinking about, yeah. Okay, let's keep going and I'll, I'll, I'll make a formal request for some questions in a moment. Uh, so specific to the, the youth to young adult, um, life stage transition. There's, there's two pieces from Plotkin that have been huge again in, in, in influencing my thinking. Um, two developmental tasks, a nature task and a culture task. The nature task is leaving the home, quote, home of one's former identity. Sorry, that would be, um, I'm just having going back and forth between two pieces of data here, so let's go with the screen. Um, number one, leaving the home of one's former identity. And number two, the second developmental task, exploring the mysteries of nature and psyche, both inner, so the nature of my own self, and outer, nature of the natural world. He calls the archetype of this stage the wanderer, and the gifts of the wanderer to the community are mystery and darkness. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on this one a little bit. So the wanderer's job is to cross borders and frontiers. And this is the culture task, leaving the home of one's former identity. So I'm just gonna read a paragraph here. Crossing borders and frontiers, looking at childhood survival strategies, personal monsters, insecurities, relinquishing the temptation to seek security in the pin in the opinions of others. And we all uh, can relate to that if we're around teens and we remember how it was to be a teen ourselves. So in other words, the culture task is to go it alone. In stepping back from the culture, you'll have to give up the temptation to seek security in the opinions of others. And this means also giving up the desire to be good, uh, quote, good, and any patterns about feeling shame about being who you really are. The primary experience of being shaped by your society and culture is temporarily over. Now it's time to go out alone, to decide for yourself where you belong, and to define your authentic self. This will require you to surrender some of your current and familiar identities, and the ones you've created and used to make sense of your adolescence, and to create security for yourself among friends. It's a big job for young people. The second task is the nature task, exploring the mysteries of nature, both inner and outer. This means developing relationship to the central mysteries of your own life, linked to the greater natural world. There's a variety of modes that, that can be used to do this work, and again, I'm probably making a list of things that people know about, or are familiar with, or are practicing, but again, to just make the list. And this, this is not meant to be exhaustive either. Uh, vision quest work, dream work, fasting, all types of meditational work, the use and the use uh, and uh, exploration of and with creativity, spending time in nature, the use of ceremony and ritual, journal writing, and other kinds of writing, all kinds of body-based practices, all kinds of physical movement, dance, breath work, yoga. Strong exertions, uh, risk taking, sacred sexuality, sacred speech, sacred silence. The, the jeunesse is consciousness, um, young people at risk. with nature, right, specifically right, animals or totem animals. <laughs> right. And animals. again, there's there's plenty of uh, uh, other things that can be added on worship, um, community ritual, etc. So there's a tension between these two developmental tasks, the culture task of leaving home and the nature task of exploring the mysteries of nature, both inner and outer. And again, pulling from Bill Plotkin's ideas here, 
there is a tension between nature and culture as they both vie for your attention at this, at this very time. Culture says, don't be weird and unpopular and leave us, you know, your family and friends and familiarity. Just choose a social role, any social role, and stay here with us. You belong with us. Nature says something very similar. Nature says, I am your true home. Enter me now deeply. So you must be true to yourself now above all else. And this is accomplished by learning to choose authenticity over easy social acceptance. You don't have to rebel against society, nor give up and simply conform to what everybody else is doing. You must choose a third way to wander. Your wandering will be both inward and outward and will cross and recross borders, both interior and exterior, in order to follow clues. Well, thank you very much, David, for your dedication and this work and this urgent need in our Try society to an openness that so many to people are using your struggling with. It, it is and quite scary and overwhelming and your what uh, to your young own edges, have to your dreams, go through, um, and to, to notice the resonance way of certain world. people, places, so and experiences. Thank you for your work and for your presence on our webinar so tonight. End with a short uh, again, again a poem here and then invite some acknowledge comments. participants who. Um, are, weren't able to be with us. This is an excerpt from a poem called Sweet Darkness by David White. Version of the webinar, so we thank you. Uh, Time to go into the dark, where the night has and, eyes to uh, thanks, recognize Andrea, its own. Thanks, Andrea, and we do recognize that some there, of our webinars are often sure at, at not different times, so um, do apologize the dark if will that be was your part of the confusion for you. But again, the as David mentioned, please contact him further than you can see. Information and I have a clue. You must learn one it thing. Above at the top right of your screen, the world was Here's made to be free in. And uh, his email as well. So do feel Give free up to all the other worlds like except to up the one to which you belong. To the webinar. Sometimes it and takes finally, darkness um, and the sweet confinement. Just to alert you to next week's webinar, the focus is or the topic is or dancing in the pews, and that, that will does be not the bring you alive. And that's next Wednesday too small for at you. two in the afternoon Eastern time. And lastly, I, I will be transferring just ask you if, to uh, if a screen got a question. In, a, in a minute just to fill out some quick feedback. And I know, Andrea, you There's weren't able piece. to be with us um, for a lot of the webinar, but perhaps as you can for the comments as you're able to give them. Um, the polls that so are numerically... I'll just recover Written that again. Now, there's a question about um, the, the list of modalities true, for exploring the nature tasks. I'll just quickly walk through those again. Vision so quest, dream work, fasting, um, again, meditation. Thank you very much, David. I, I'll give you the last of word. Practice, and once you say goodbye, I'll Time and nature, ceremony, feedback. journal writing, movement, breath work, yoga, exertion, risk taking, sacred sex, sacred speech, sacred silence, encounters with nature, and altered